Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to Monster Hunter World here on the K-Wings Let's Plays channel. We're of course the K-Wings and I am Snidely Whiplash. <laughs> I have the mustache. Yeah. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It's monster hunting time. Today we are going to go after an optional quest uh, I was, for... I was, yeah. I was going to tell you the moose and squirrel, but I kind of don't know how to do their accents. Moose and squirrel. Yeah, oh, totally. Oh, Wingle, that guy's mustache is big. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember how to do the squirrel guy. The squirrel. Kind Rocky. Of yeah. yeah, Rocky the squirrel. So today we're going after the cobra venom creature, and uh, hopefully we'll do pretty well against it. It has weakness to fire, so since we have a fire rod, maybe uh, we can do some damage. Oh Possibly. my gosh, was Bullwinkle and uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle out when we were younger, or was that a really old show when we were young? It was on reruns when we were uh, young. Ah, I just... It's it was from the 40s. Wow. That show was funny. Actually, the 50s. 50s I, or 60s. I enjoyed Rocky and Bullwinkle so much. Bullwinkle! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> you have to remember, in the 80s, there were so many shows, like cartoons that were reruns of uh, stuff from, like, they had Looney Tunes yeah. or Merry Melodies. and then, like, we even saw um, stuff but we also from had the new 60s, stuff. too. Speed Racer. Ah! Yeah. And, um, um, but we had our own shows that were going on at that time, too. I know. 80s was the year of lots of awesome animation. It's off to the rotten place to do rotten things to monsters. Yay! Let's... Oh, yeah, this place does look rotten. But it has cool music. Like, this is the level that really oh, has yeah. the awesome hunting music it that does. you like. It does. They have to make up for the gross uh, scenery with awesome music. So, during an expedition recently, I actually learned there is a really cool place to find the... Um, what do you call it? That creepy, like, bony area with all the, like, the poison stuff. Ugh. It's actually pretty easy to find. Ah! Come oh, on, dude! This guy is like literally. There was a stop sign there, and you ran it. I know. He's not watching where he's going at all. Does a pedestrian have to exchange insurance information, or you just sue him? How does I, it work? I just, I. Don't. I'm gonna be speaking to my lawyer about that. I'm pretty sure in some countries you can literally sue people if you hit them with a car. Does That's that... what I've heard. I've heard it's like you're both at fault in like places in Asia and stuff. So we're using our cloak of <laughs> invisibility to just uh, move past this fool because as much as I'd love to fight him again, not right now. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, what I was told like with my family in Taiwan and stuff was that if I ever went there, I needed to get out of the way of cars because if they hit me, it was my fault for not getting out of their way. <laughs> So also, like, <laughs> um, I need to go against a lot of the, quote, YouTubers. I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I'm more like a game influencer. But a lot of people are telling people in their videos, because they're new to Monster Hunter, they try to act like experts, and they say stuff like, optional quests don't matter, and you don't need to do this, you don't need to do that. The reason why optional quests are important, and the reason why we're doing it right now is after we defeat this optional quest, we will unlock the ability to research uh, stuff with the um, investigation team. That oh. way, after we beat this monster, they can begin uh, doing expeditions where you go in and you can harvest more materials through an investigation. Yeah. After defeating the optional quest. If you don't do the optional quest, you will never get to open the investigation quest for the monsters that you want to make armors for. And while it is a waste of time to play an optional quest like three or two or, you know, some people even used to play them like four or five times in a row to get the armor, uh, yeah. doing the investigations after you do the optional quest once, that's really good. So doing it at least once is good. You have and to then, do it at least once to unlock the And then you have to do the investigations after that. And, and the that. investigations you only get to do as many times as they offer. Or some of the monsters, they only offer for a limited time once you oh. activate it. So did they used to have investiga investigations in the other uh, Monster Hunter games? No. Okay. So this whole science researchy thing is totally new, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, As are the, uh, there he is. That's the so guy So guys and gals, if people tell you don't do the optional quests. Do it once. Make sure to do it and then do the investigation after it. Yeah, you don't have to constantly, uh, I will tell people, 
the only way that I will agree with a lot of the new players that, you know, have not necessarily bigger channels than us, but yeah. um, they're I... new to Monster Hunter and they think they know what they're talking about. Um, also, the weapons they're using are terrible and they're horrible at mounting and doing combos and all that other stuff. But um, it's important to do the um, optional quests, mm -hmm. but you don't have to do them constantly. So the only thing correct that they're saying, and every one of them is blasting, like, oh, the optional quests are lame and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, they are important in some aspect, but you don't have to... Don't keep doing them over yes, and over again. Yes, you don't have to keep repeating So them. what do you get with it? Once you do the investigation after the optional quest, then you can upgrade your armor better, or you can have more armor suits available? You get more materials doing an investigation. Oh, you can get better. Oh, okay, you get more materials on the investigation. Mm -hmm. okay, and cool. usually it's a, a lot less well, time is involved. Yeah. Well, I feel like I don't really always... I always say that about myself, too, that I don't feel like I'm really a YouTuber. I work on YouTube, just like there's a lot of companies that work on YouTube, because I feel like YouTubers, in general, their goal is to try to get as many... They just want to grow their channel as big as possible, as fast as possible. And for me and you, like our company and stuff, we don't... We like showing you guys new games we like playing what we like we like working with different companies and showing off their product and just showing all kinds of interesting things on our channel so it's not quite our goal just to play whatever everyone wants to see and if i wanted know. to be like quote a big channel all i would do is play minecraft and i hate minecraft yeah, our channel is more like we we like showing off certain things and we like working with different companies. We happen to work on YouTube, but we could always work on a website or something instead. We might come to that someday, <laughs> who knows? But yeah, um, also, if you guys are going for the great Jira's armor, whatever they call it, see these little, I don't know, mutant baby things? You want to get their hides because you'll need them to upgrade uh, your new uh, armor set that you're going for. Uh, the one thing I don't like about this monster that we're going to fight, he has the ability to cause polarisis and stun. And so far, I haven't found an armor that really works well against him. I got creamed in an expedition because uh, I tried to practice fighting him because I knew that we were going to do like an actual, uh, quote, uh, story episode today when this is just an optional quest. This doesn't progress the story. This was the monster that we met down here in these poison mist thingies. And as we're down here, the closer we get to the, that, what looks like mustard gas, it's going to start to deplete our health. You can see up in the corner where that little bar, we're being poisoned. Oh, so wow. even though we ate and we have all these status effects and stuff like that, just being down in this misty area, since we don't have an armor that can resist venom and poisons and toxins, the character is being hurt. Yeah. That's not good. No. In fact, uh, just full disclosure, when I did expeditions, I fainted a lot fighting the monster that we're going to fight today because um, I wasn't paying attention to my health gauge. It's not that the monster was difficult to me. I did not mind my surroundings and oops. <laughs> yeah. It was like that one time I got poisoned when we were fighting that Pookie Pookie for your channel. Oh, And yeah. I was riding the monster and I was almost ready to kill it and then I fainted because I had been poisoned. Yeah. And even yeah. though I was up there, like, doing awesome stuff, I died because of poison, so. Yeah. I kind of wish they would show reruns. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not to change the subject, but. That was random. I, I wish they would show reruns of really old cartoons again, because I miss that. They do, but they consider really old cartoons now 80s cartoons, and it's called Cartoon Network Boomerang. So, And they'll play some 60s cartoons, like Flintstones and Jetsons and things like that, but they won't go full-blown. Well, actually, no. I, I think they do show Merry Melodies. Scooby-Doo is wicked old, though. I mean, well, I mean, it went through so many years, though. Scooby-Doo, there's like always decades. been a new Scooby-Doo, like, every decade, which is amazing. Yeah. It started in the 60s, and they're still doing stuff with it today. And that latest uh, movie they had with Batman Brave and the Bold was actually pretty funny. Yeah, that was a good... That was a I good was surprised movie. by that. I thought it was going to be like, oh, this is just another lame Scooby-Doo movie, but um, it was actually really good. See? This is what I'm talking about. Even this little underlings, Polarisis. So oh. what happens when this occurs, if I get hit again, of course we're gonna faint. Yep, there it goes. Those Red. guys are crazy. Aren't they? Ugh. We're not on an expedition, are we, though? Nope. So that means we only have two faints left, and then we fail. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't seen you faint a lot in quests, though. 
No, I don't normally do it, but when it comes to... Okay, I've already eaten, so we can't eat a meal. That's awesome. Sadness. It I don't know if this means that our stats carry over after we die. Usually in the previous Monster Hunter game, even though your tummy's full and stuff, all those additional boosts you got for, like, attack up and oh. defense and stuff, it all disappears after. I thought... Yeah, I never remember it preventing you from eating again in the old ones. You could but only maybe. eat oh, okay. once. Oh. This one allows you to eat more than once because they've right. lowered, you know, some stuff. Yeah, well, I have to say, Caving, your Monsters Hunter series is my favorite. <gasps> we can't oh, fight that, that guy guy's right now. Probably because you're here and you're my favorite. He's yeah. a really cool monster to fight, but I fought him in an expedition, almost killed him. He's really strong. Ah. Think like fighting two Anjanoth and a Ross at the same time. The only thing that makes this place cooler than just, like, mud and rotting stuff is what thinking is that, that it's a giant dragon. <laughs> oh, like a dragon corpse thing? Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. somebody up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, first... What? A hunter? Here! So long. What he gave you something, but... I can't even read it. Apparently he had to throw it down. He gave me something. I'm not really sure what it was. Uh, so... I yeah. This armor set that we're going to be working on for the next couple days is based on this character. And uh, I've already previewed um, the armor online. I know what it looks like. It kind of looks like Plague Knight. He's got like this weird bird mask, which is kind of bizarre considering this is like a cobra creature and not a bird. But oh, yeah, it is I like a cobra. I think that it protects against venom. Yeah, this feels like a cobra walrus saber tooth tiger. Let's we'll go with Cobra Tiger. Oh, like Cobra Sabertooth Tiger, Tiger. yeah. I, I want to see Walrus. Yeah, maybe not Definitely Walrus. Definitely Sabertooth Tiger with, like, Cobra. Because it's got, like, yeah. a scaly viper thing to it. Cobra! Cobra! Totally. <laughs> Combos for days! Whoops. Whenever there's trouble, he's here till the fight's done. K-Wing the Mighty is here! Wow. Alright, I'm weird. Oh, horribly. Yeah, <laughs> just... Maybe this is what editing is for. <laughs> yeah, totally. Ah. Uh, so, in our series, just so I can be clear, because we have other games we'll be looking at and diving, like, I'm already about mm, probably 35 hours into this game. Yeah. Um, and I am taking my time with it so that we're able to beat the monsters and I can give you guys tips and tricks and stuff while we're fighting them. But um, I will not be showing high rank stuff uh, in terms of as a crud as like oh. a, a story based thing because high rank is after you beat the game Oh, and right. there are two types of armors in this game there's A and B rank um, and they change the way the armor looks and they give it the ability to um, I don't know if you remember this but you could add things like armor spheres and other things to your armor oh, yeah, like decorations and stuff like that Yeah. so I in never this got game <laughs> once you get to high rank you'll have the ability to equip like things to your armor as well as collecting every armor set that you have in this game there is a a rank version of it and that's oh. the armor that you want to go with but it changes how the armor is a little bit like um for example the anjanoth armor instead of it having that really cool night visor it'll have the night visor open and oh. it'll have like a, a few more bells and whistles on the armor Oh, Nothing I major. see. So it's like a little cranked up to 11. But yeah. it's the stats Same. that you're able to do for that armor. That's oh. important. Yeah. So I won't be doing uh, replaying monsters to do high rank stuff. When there's DLC monsters, I will show those. Uh, but it won't be like all the time. Like once yeah. we're done with the story, the series will no longer be daily. Um, I'm hoping that we can be done with the story by the time of the 23rd when um, Gun Gale comes out, like uh, so, Sword Art Online. So basically, once you're, ah! done, once you're done with the main story, then everything else is just like extra. Yeah, it's just bonus stuff. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, this is actually going to be good because I'm actually struggling fighting this monster right now, and I really didn't bring that many um, Mega Potions with me. That guy looks like a uh, lava... Uh, he is not a fun monster to fight. Yeah. Um, and also, the weapon that I have right now is not 
really useful against them because it's a fire-based weapon. Well, I always wonder, like, if it would be faster if you had a bigger weapon, like a hammer or a sword. But you really like your, um... Spear. I've already gotten requests to show different weapons. I'm not proficient with those. Yeah. Uh, I play with the Insect Glaive. That's what I've learned to master and... Um, you know, I've played it since Monster Hunter 4. It's my weapon of choice. Before um, Monster Hunter 4, my main weapon was the believe... No, it wasn't the Twin Blades, because the Twin Blades were new. Um, I can't remember what you used to use. I don't think you used the giant sword. I had a switch axe. Oh yeah, I remember that. So my playstyle had to change significantly when the... Um, spear came out because with the spear you're able to maneuver better than most weapons like well you know what kirito doesn't switch weapons he always sticks with what he knows yeah <laughs> and I, I like the long sword long sword was cool but you know i've just gotten so used and i've already invested about 35 hours into the insect wave in this game so. i'm just happy to see you play through the story like i I can't even get through the story because it's just, we have so many games going on at once that it's just like, it's hard to find. I can't believe that you're able to find time every night to grind so many hours on this. Well, currently I'm working on a, a new armor set that will debut uh, in the next story episode because this is the last of, this creature was introduced when we were on a story quest and it gave us the option of fleeing or fighting. Actually, for the story, it wanted us to leave. Um, well, I would have fought him, but probably would have lost. You know what, though, K-Wing? Um, mm. You do show us mostly the armor sets, though. That's one thing you like showing off. I'm a huge collector. Through. Like, even after we're done with the story, I'm going to keep playing this game, like, when I edit and stuff, because I like collecting armors. There are 150 armors in this game. I yeah. won't be doing the repeats, because there's no point in me refighting these monsters in high rank. Because the armor only changes a little bit. I'm not that much of a completionist. I'm a hoarder, but I'm not that insane. So um, once I get the set for this guy, that would be complete for me, you know, and I would max out the armor and whatever. Um, yeah. Most people, they would wait until they hit A rank so they can add charms and decorations and do even more stuff to the game. I will probably complete one A rank armor and mm -hmm. max it out like crazy so it's like two or three hundred defense and yeah. put decorations and stuff on it. But I'm not going to do it for every armor set. Most of the people that have shown the armors for this game, they didn't collect all the armors. They show them in the blacksmith area. Oh my gosh, wow. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So and you can tell when you look at their armors because they don't have the pieces bought. So, and just to show all the armors, they had to play 100 hours. Um, I'm about 35 hours in in terms of grinding, in terms of the story. We're probably about 8 hours into the story, maybe. I don't know. Oh, wow. Um, the story is about, mm, well, I want to say 30 hours long. I think that you're showing it a good way, though, because the way that Monster Hunter is to be played, like, I feel like... You can't if you try to get all the armors and all the weapons, you'll never you'll never get through the game. It'd take like, you two months to do it. If you played this game nonstop for two months, like say you have a normal nine to five job, uh, you come home, eat dinner, put on Monster Hunter. That is if you don't get bored with it during that time, because uh, some of the other Monster Hunter games, like hunting materials and stuff, got really boring. Um, this game does a great way of um, making it easy to remember where materials are. Example, yeah. the uh, crystal core that a lot of people need to finish um, the tizzy armor and some of the other things and some of their swords and stuff. It's located in area 11. Um, there is a mining place in area 11 of the, uh, mm. what do you call it? The, the highlands. The, oh, um, yeah. Is it called the coral highlands? Yeah, I, I believe it is yeah. called the Coral Highlands. Yeah, the, the, the one that looks like it's under the ocean. It's so, a coral something. Yeah, so you go there, and that's where you find the crystal core thing that people are looking for and some other things. I think it is called Coral Highlands. Because I asked people for help, but then I accidentally discovered it when I was running all over the map. And you do have to get it from uh, the actual mining place. Oh, wow. So there's like two or three blue crystals that appear every probably 15 to 20 minutes in that like um, highlands area oh you have to keep uh -oh. waiting okay not gonna faint again no. not happening drink drink that first aid 
Come on, K Wing the Mighty, you're becoming mighty. Yeah, but we're still poisoned. Oh, so, I mean, even yeah, though we're healing it's... ourselves, I mean, I have that, like, kind of death mist around me. See? How it's, like, depleting everything, even though I'm doing my best. Please, well, guys, go away. I like no. in your playthrough, you can actually see how the armors work, and, like, I like how you talk about how the different armors are good protecting against different um, beasts and stuff like that, so. Most of the people who've completed this game already, they had friends playing with them. And they also, they had makeshift armors, and they played the game wrong, but they still beat it, and then they were done with it. Like, yeah. most YouTubers spend about two weeks, not even, they'll, they'll do about maybe nine days for one game, and wow. just, like, spam episodes. But yeah, most of the people, they had all uh, people helping them, and uh, most of the game was beaten using, I believe, a bow and arrow for them, which is one of the easiest weapons to upgrade. I, I like the Bone Harrow, but I feel like it doesn't take very much damage out, and I don't... No, it doesn't. That's why it takes... It can take up to a full quest to beat one monster. That's, That's why they play with other people. Do they still have the Switch Axe in this yes. game? Mm -hmm. Maybe I should learn that or something. The but... Switch Axe is a really hard weapon to use, but it delivers a lot of damage. And uh, most of these weapons, like back in the day, they didn't give you a lot of uh, ability to maneuver around. Yeah, that's, but that's, that's the That's changed thing. with this one. Well, when I used to try the long sword or something, I'd be lifting my sword slowly, and then the monster would just slash at me, and I would faint. And I think that I you got should learn. I think it'd be cool to see you use the giant samurai sword because it does have an ability to mount, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's got some good combos. It's fast. And uh, you don't sacrifice too much uh, maneuverability. So there's a giant samurai sword. Oh wow! That's basically what I call it. It looks like a yeah. It looks like a giant like katana. Um, I forget what game that was introduced in, but it's different than the long sword or the great sword or the switch axe. It's yeah. still a big weapon. Oh crud! Run run so run 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 run. You like a sword that's a little faster to use. Right, right. Come on, take the potion. Take the potion. Oh no! It's gonna be close. It's gonna be really Man, close. Man, those guys are feisty. They don't leave you alone. No, they don't. But yeah, if I had some type of poison protection, this monster wouldn't be that difficult. Like, I'm struggling with him because one, I'm doing this live, and uh, being a chatty Cathy, and also, yeah, um, I have no protection against his Polaris's ability. So when I get stunned, my health still drains. Uh, because oh. of the, you know, the, the environment is bad. Like, I don't like this environment. This is the one place in the game that I don't like right now. Um, because as far as I know, maybe, like, a nutrient potion would, uh, fix my ailments. But I know for a fact that an antidote potion doesn't work here. Whoa. Because it's not, it's the air itself is toxic. Because it's gross. Oh. It's poison. It's putrid air. Put yeah, there you go. It's it's bad. It's not it's not happy fun times. Well, if this if you are inside a corpse of a giant dragon, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> but I I'm getting too dark. But like the original Monster Hunter games, um, the reason why it took people a long time to play them is you have to one master the combat, learn how to track the monsters without using all the bells and whistles that are in this game. We didn't have mm. back in my day. We didn't have flying spark fly things to find the monster. You had to use something called a paint berry, and oh yep. no, we're gonna die. Back in my day. Back in my day, we had to use something called a paint berry, and it'd only stay on the monster for about 15 minutes. Wow, K-Wing, that's amazing. Run! 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 Wow, Grandpa. Was it hard to put the paint berry on the monster? It was. Also, before you would challenge a big dragon, you want to make sure you get dragon armor. Confound it! But, yeah. but Grandpa, my teacher says oh. that dragons are... No, never mind. Your teacher's full of crap. <laughs> you fought a real dragon, Grandpa? Wow! That's right. So amazing. Um, there are some Monster Hunter Tri characters, uh, monsters that appear in this game. I don't know if they're DLC or if they're just like... Uh, later in the game, but there's been some people uh, that have been commenting on some of the... I don't know if it's high-rank armor or if it's DLC quests or whatever, but some of the popular Monster Hunter Tri characters appear in this. 
So and those were really popular armor sets like that everybody loved on the the Wii or Monster Hunter uh, three or whatever you want to call it. Cool. But I don't know other than the Origins armor if there's anything else from like Monster Hunter four or Generations. I'm sure they're gonna add other armors like as DLC because you know Capcom loves DLC packages. Oh yeah. And they're probably gonna add like for new players who don't want to spend. I in all honesty. Um, it only takes in Monster Hunter World, after completing an investigation and stuff like that, um, I can put together four armors in about three hours. If, Whoa. Yeah. Depending on, you know... And that was, like, unheard of in the other Monster Hunter Oh, yeah. Games. No, no, no. You can... Psh, to put together two armors, it'd take <laughs> you, like, two days. Yeah. Because you wouldn't, once you defeated the monster, you wouldn't really get the right part. So you would have to try to do capture quests. I love the, the fact oh, yeah. that capture quests in this game are optional. Yes. Like, and they're not even part of the optional quests. They are something that you have to talk to the research committee. And you will get either a, no, you get a gold um, bonus. Which I think gives you even more materials. Oh, um, I don't okay. care. I'm never doing it. I hate capture quests. I hate yeah. them with a passion. I'm one of those veterans that like absolutely despises capture quests. Yeah. And I will not do them. If it's a part of the story, I'll do it. But the problem with Monster Hunter Try and some of the other ones is they incorporated the capture quests into um, those games and it made it very difficult to progress the story. Oh, yeah. But yeah, in those older games, you wanted to grind like crazy and make sure that you had strong armor before you fought the next set of monsters. Yeah. In this game, uh, the way it is, you could actually get a pretty decent weapon um, after fighting like an Anjanoth or even if you got lucky and you took down a Ryathan with um, some friends, like say you're playing online and you're able to max out your bow early in the game, you can just go through or greatsword. And there you go. That's how a lot of cool. people have done it. Yeah, and by making it difficult with the capture quest, it was like making it impossible. Like You couldn't go any further without doing it. Monster Basically. Hunter was a very close-knit circle, and now it's like more accessible. Which, I mean, I'm totally fine with now. I was never an elitist to begin with. Um, I just had a problem with new players like acting like they were experts when they'd never played Monster Hunter and they were doing everything wrong yet still able to beat the monster. Yeah, like, like, um, just like saying like, oh, I'm so great at this game, not acknowledging that the difficulty was lowered, like pretending you're kind of cooler than you are, like, instead of acknowledging, okay, they lowered the difficulty, so they made it a little easier for people. Most people, yeah. they actually say about 50% uh, of the players that are playing this game, they have a death toll, like on um, Capcom's website or something. I forget where, some hunter told me this, like when I was playing online with him. Um, if you go, you can read the statistic of where people die the most in this game, and it's usually fighting the Anjanoth. Oh. Like that's when I would say the difficulty changes a little bit. Yeah. Um, I will faint maybe once or twice fighting a monster, but I won't get a game over anymore. But part of that is the weapon choice that I use. I don't know necessarily if I'm going to be able to beat the monster just on my sheer strength alone and skills in combat, mm -hmm. or, you know, my combos with the insect glaive. So I make sure that I have the right amount of buffs. When I get in a dicey situation, I can actually steal the monster's health from him by having my insect glaive, like, you know, siphon his energy away yeah, from him. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I thought there was some kind of insect part that could help you with your health. See how my scepter's growing, glowing green? Yeah. That means that my kinsect has the ability to heal. Oh, On that's On top of good. that, since I've been doing a lot of quests that have been optional and um, all that other stuff, what do you call it? Like, investigations? Oh, please. Shadow has been increasing her skills, so she also has a heal ability. Plus, wow. she has the ability to call other cats to our defense or monsters with a horn. And, you know, it's not like so cool. I'm fighting this guy after only playing the game for, like, maybe, we'll say eight hours. Something like that. Yeah. I've been playing for close to 40, and I know what I'm doing. I know uh, what it means. I I'm still going to grind my characters, and I still go crazy collecting armor, because that's how I like to play. Well, I don't... I feel like after we're done recording, I don't see you for a long time. Well, except for yesterday, I was doing laundry and stuff while you were grinding. Well, tonight... 
I'm going to be able to get the uh, bug armor, which is, uh, it can be upgraded to be about, like, I think 150 defense, which will make it the strongest armor I have at the moment, because I have, like, based on all the uh, optional and um, research quests I've done, I have about yeah. 25 armor plus um, spheres, not just armor spheres. I have like a hundred armor spheres, but they don't really do that much. You want to have armor plus, oh, so okay. you can get the best out of upgrades May and things I, like that. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so if you have a different like, um, like right now it's growing green because of the life element on your spear, mm -hmm. and you're six So does it grow a glow a different color if you have a different power? Yep. Lightning is yellow, or oh. Polaris is yellow. Fire is red. Water is blue. White, I don't remember what that is, but there are different insects for cool. different abilities. Mm -hmm. Thanks, honey. No problem. But yeah, I... If you guys... Now you know my secret, though, when you watch me uh, hunt different monsters and I'm showing off other armors, because every other episode I like to show brand new armors. Um, and I'm actually going to show you guys an armor that I'm working on. It's not quite done yet. Uh, but I'm hoping it will debut for the next story episode we're going to do because this is the last of the, quote, optional monsters that I'm going to show. Ah. Because we can't fight one of those red guys yet. He's too big. But I thought people said they wanted to see the small quests, too. They're not really small quests. Or some people These did. were um, battles against monsters that you ran into during the story and you had the option of fighting them or not. Oh, I see. But I have to... I thought it'd be fun to do the optional quest anyway because it gives content to you guys. Technically, it's a part of the story. And also, I can then, as soon as I finish this episode, I can go through and fight this monster three times under an investigation and get all his armor in about an hour and a half to two hours. So that, that works out. It works for me. And, you know, yeah, we hey. only record like one Monster Hunter episode a day and, and then it, I grind. It works for Shadow because Shadow likes more... Um, Quests. But here are the armors that we're working on. Um, where is he? There he is. See what I was talking about? It looks like a bird face. Oh, yeah. He looks weird. Those are with the gloves. It's kind of like a cobra, like, I don't know. It, it's very, like, leather-like. It looks like a anime character. But this is what the full set looks like. See? Whoa, he looks like a chicken. No, he, he looks like oh, I, I told you, Plague Knight. Oh, Plague Knight. Yeah, yeah, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, with all the herbs and stuff in the beak. Yeah, he does kind of So like all that. we can afford to get right now, because we don't have enough materials, I've only fought the monster once, um, we're only able to get the mask, I think. Yeah. But that's the mask. So we're going to replace the Snidely Whiplash mask, and then you can see the different parts that you need. You need scales... Um, you need Polaris' sacks, which you're only going to get from investigation quests. Those are really hard to get. Oh, Whether it's okay. aqua sacks, electric sacks, um, the best way to do those is investigations. Or if you're hunting with a group and they're damaging the different parts of the body of the monster, uh, you can oh. get lucky with that. The other monster armor that I'll be working on is uh, that giant like bone monster, as well as mm -hmm. the uh, beetles which I'll need to make poison smoke for just like in the past, but I'm looking forward to that. Yay. But anyway, guys and gals, that does it for this optional quest. Join us Yay. next time as we continue the story and debut a brand new armor. Until we meet again, God bless and happy gaming. Tomorrow is a new episode of Something in the Morning, and then we've got Dragon Ball and, of course, Monster Hunter. Until we meet again, God bless and happy gaming. See ya! Have a great day, guys.